as you thought. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk, reporting live from the cam. High in demand, so please stand by if you can. What we got is worth a lot, so put a tie on your plans. On court, talking sports through the eyes of the fans. With Trip Young, Emma Marie, Eric Sanchez. You heard what I said, we elite. Check the latest topics and stay ahead of the beat. Keep us in your topics and uh -huh. we ahead of the Yo. streets. It's Johnny Floss, bringing a different type of blend. Backing up Misfit to make sure y'all tuned in. You gotta watch, this show is one of a kind. Updates on your TV screen from 8 to 9. For the older folks, so even if you're younger, no matter what sport, this show, we got it covered. It's filmed live in the middle of BK, so ain't no better sports show to watch on Thursdays. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. What's going on this trip, young real fans, real talk. And of course, you know, I got legend in two games, Eric Sanchez with me. But today we got two very special guests with us from the Ballers Journal, Aaron and Lawrence. What's going on? Welcome to Real Fans Real Talk. What's up? What's up? Thanks for having us. I know. I know. It's, been, it's been a while. I know. Listen, and I feel bad, guys, because I told you we was going to bring y'all into the station and do this the right way. But. You know, COVID got everything shook up still, and they're not talking about opening the station back up until maybe like around the summer. And we was like, nah, man, we was tired of waiting. We wanted to have y'all come on and rock out with us. So we just going to get to it. Thanks. Sounds good. All right. Eric, what's good, though, man? How's everything with you? I'm good, man. I got the Lakers Clippers game in the background. I'm ready to get it going. I know we're going to get into a lot of basketball talk because the basketball journey was here. So That's I'm ready good. to get going. We got it. Yeah, yeah, we do. We do got a lot of basketball to get into. I'm you mentioned the game. I was just telling them I had the game on in the background over here, too. I don't really necessarily look at this as a game because, you know, my guy's not there. Plus, AD's not there. You know what I mean? Andre Drummond is, is out out as well. He got a little foot injury that he's he's dealing with right now. So I'm I'm watching it, but I'm not really watching it, watching it. Um, but, you know, we might as well just start with Andre, with the Andre Drummond injury. He's supposed to be out for a short time. Um but the Lakers can't afford any more injuries right now because they can't afford to to wind up falling into that uh playoff uh format, the tournament playing uh that the league started last year. Um what what, what did you got what do you guys think first about the Andre Drummond signing with the Lakers? With, um if everyone's healthy, where do you think that puts them? And um how long, you know, can the Lakers go without having one of their big three on the court? Uh you want to take that or can I jump in? Go ahead. I think, um, first of all, I think something you said that's very interesting is if all players are healthy. I think that is a, I think that is an ideal situation. I don't think that is a realistic situation in the NBA anymore. I think with the intensity of the game and the heightened level of talent, that injuries are bound to happen. And I think when people put together their depth charts, they should stop just looking at the starting five. And I think any gambling people should stop looking at the starting five. I think it is kind of crazy of us to actually consider that all, all of the starting five players will be there uh, game in and game out, especially with players who can't even play on a, the back end or the front end of a, a, a back to back or double header, however you put it. Um, but to answer your question, I think the Drummond signing, um, see, and we've talked about this on our show, E. I, I, I don't necessarily agree with these types of moves. I feel like we're overloading certain teams and we might as well have two different leagues at this point. So I thought the move was, um, I thought the move was corny from, um, from a competitive standpoint. And I know people feel like this was meant to be a competitive move, but I feel like it was a corny move from a competitive standpoint. And I think we are running low on competition and we are running high on transaction. And it's kind of a turnoff for me. You know, so I don't really like watching the Lakers or I, I'm not going to like watching the Lakers if they keep stacking up players. That's how I feel about the Lakers. Plus, I'm a Bulls. I'm a Bulls fan and y'all taking away all the talent. <laughs> y'all got, y'all got, um, y'all got Vucevic, didn't y'all? <laughs> That's what you're going to do? That's what we, we, we going to mention Drummond, LeBron, Davis, and, and who That's else? That's all He's like, what, three-time All-Star now, Vucevic? Come on, you got to give him his props. Next question. <laughs> well, well, Aaron, did you have a, did you have a, a take on Drummond going to LA and, and the competitive balance? Yeah, I mean, I'm just 
it's kind of annoying. I, I mean, and it's same thing that's happening with the Nets too, right? Like, I mean, they're just loading up these teams. And so is this what is this what we do? We just buy up our rosters until we get the the ring. I mean, I don't know. It it's it, you know, I do think it takes away some of the competitive spirit. And it does seem like in some ways the players do have a lot more control. I mean, Katie's out there texting like, yo, come on, you got to join us. You got to join us, you know? So it's like, and LeBron does the same thing, you know, whatever. So yeah, it's, it's, I mean, I agree. I agree with, with Lawrence. I, I don't, I don't love it, but I mean, for them, it's great. Why not? I mean, sure. But for, as a fan, I don't know. I mean, it's like, I don't know. I'd, yeah. I, I, I always like to root for the underdog. I like to see the people who show up and can win with the no names, win with like the one superstar who has his, you know, his supporting cast. I love to see the underdog step in and like just take down the Kings, right? So I, that's kind of where I stand on it. But I mean- but you I passed that point though. I don't know if we ever gonna see another one superstar or no superstar team win an NBA Finals ever again. We're never, yeah, we're yeah. past that point. And, and both you guys made great points in terms of player empowerment and the players reaching out to each other and saying, hey, come play with me and let's load up over here. And I, I agree. I wish there was a little bit more competitive balance because I feel like over the last 10 to 12 years, we've seen this imbalance of we know who to expect in the finals and then we normally get that matchup. You know, when LeBron, and I'm not blaming him, but when LeBron teamed up with Wade and Bosh, we knew the Heat were going to be in the finals every year. Um, when KD went to Golden State, we knew that was going to continuously be the matchup. And now we're seeing the same thing again. But I think really there's a situation where the league has to kind of take some control. Because if I'm a GM of any team, my job is to load up and get my team as close to being competitive for a championship as I possibly can. So we can't knock the Lakers for taking Andre Drummond if he wants to go there. They right. weren't the only team that wanted him, but he wanted to go there. So it was like, hey, I'm, I'm going to go. And the same thing with Blake Griffin and, and Lamarcus going to Brooklyn. The league at some point has to step in, though, because I think the, buy, the, the buyout market is getting a little ridiculous. We, yeah. We've known for, for months that Andre Drummond wasn't going to play for Cleveland and he was on his way out. And the fact that he was able to linger and then just be bought out and signed for pennies on the dollar, right? Because the Lakers don't have the cap space or the moves to, to acquire that type of player if he isn't bought out. So the league at some point has to step in and, and there's got to either be some sort of harsh penalties or restrictions on who you can bring on if you don't have the cap space. That's think, that's really the only way they could fix it. I think what we what we do from here, and I don't I don't mean we as in the fans. I mean what happens here in terms of like me being a diehard NBA fan is we now are on our way to following MLB's format, where it is the highest paying team or the highest paid team has the best access to the players. You know, you look at these astronomical contracts. That's where we're headed with the NBA they're going to have to like the players are going to start looking for not just the best team, but the best team that can also fund them the proper way. Right. As you look at um, Linder being signed. Right. And I know we're going to get into that. And I see you are wearing your Mets gear. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a huge New York team fan. So the, the blue and orange for me, I'm, it's not my thing, but um, I say all that to say this, I really do think we are headed towards, a place where it is the highest bidder. Um, and it may even go beyond uh, the most competitive or the most likely to win the championship. And it may just become the highest bidder, which is its own thing. But then yeah, that would probably help the Knicks out if, if, if that's the case. If they get to a more uh, no salary cap at all, that actually would help the Knicks and, and you know, I don't, really make you feel good. I don't know that the Knicks are in the market for help. Uh, just based on the way the Knicks have made moves in the past 20 to 30 years, I don't think their goal is to win championships. I'm not sure what their goal is. Uh, I, think I don't that's think that's their take, man. Do you, do, you, do you really? Yeah, absolutely. Do you really look at some of the moves you guys have made throughout the history. The Knicks. We're but, talking about the so, Knicks where careers go to die. For I the hate most to say part, it. For the, no, no, that, that line is, is correct because the Knicks historically have done a terrible job of building a team and they've been notorious for getting guys based off name as opposed to where they're actually at in their career. But that's an unfair take for the current regime because everything Leon Rose has shown us is that he's going to be patient and he wants to build it up slowly. They, they haven't tried to make any splashy move. They didn't go out there at the trade deadline and say, well, let's just go get a name because it means something. They didn't, this past off season, when everyone thought, hey, they're going to be in the market for Chris Paul, Leon Rose said, no, we don't want to go that, that route. We want to be patient and develop something here. I don't want to be 
the pin in the balloon popping. However, the number one phrase I've always heard from the Knicks and the Knicks fans is next year is our year. Tell me how this is different. Right. And so my frustration with the Knicks and I'm only frustrated with the Knicks because I had to grow up around the fans. Right. I'm a, I'm a, I'm born and raised in New York city and in the park, you hear all this stuff about the Knicks and they downplayed Jordan and they downplayed Phil Jackson. They downplayed okay. Indiana. Of course, of course, of course, cause we're in New York. Right. And this is the Eastern conference. However, bring something to the table. Y'all paid, y'all you- paid Allen Houston all that money and got rid of him. Right. Y'all had no, all that's stars. not true. I mean, well, he, I'm sorry, injuries took right. place. He right? got injured a year after signing his contract. I mean, paid, we got no control over that. But you do have control over the fact that he hadn't really shown himself yet. He that's was not still, true either. Oh, my. He had just, he oh, had just me, led oh us my. to a finals before he got the contract extension. He he did? He did or the rest of was the he, team did? So him and Latrell really him and Latro weren't the best that, two players on that team? That's the name we want to hear. Latrell, right, right, hold really? on. Him, him and Latrell weren't the best two players. He had come off the back-to-back all-star appearances. Him and Latrell were the best two players. He has the most iconic shot of that team, right? The runner the runner in game five in Miami when they're the AFC. When it bounces in off the rim and off the Did it not board, go in? It, it sure did. Right. It so, sure so did. We, we, but so I can make a half-court court shot. That doesn't make me a half-court shooter. But nobody's saying he's a half-court shooter. We're talking I'm, about a realistic being, shot in a game. That, that was he an makes. exaggeration to point out the fact that it the, if a shot bounces in, I'm I'm sorry, Allen Houston. I've never understood why y'all threw so much money at him. He was not that good. He was not that good. You I didn't throw mad money of, at Latrell. You, but you you base it off of the economics at the time when the player becomes a free agent. There are plenty of guys who we can say are overpaid, but when you hit the market, the market is dictated by who is out there, right? I can't spend money on another guy who isn't available. If Allen Houston is my guy and is coming off two all-star appearances and he's our at the time because we're transitioning from Patrick Ewing, if he's my best player, what am I, what am I to do? Let him walk after coming off a finals appearance? I will, I will say this. I do. I, yes. As, as, much as, as much as I get who, at who, it. Who they, in their right mind would let their, their best player? All right, so, so if, we, if we're using your logic, right? If mm-hmm. we're using your log, logic, mm-hmm. then... It better be a comparable player. Don't no, no, I'm, I'm just saying, I, I wasn't even going to say a name. I wasn't even going to okay. say a name. I was just going to say in general, but if, if we're going to use a comparable player, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I'll use recent, a recent player. Okay. Miami goes to the finals last year. Dragic was probably their second best player on that team. Miami shouldn't have resigned Dragic then. I had questions about them resigning Dragic. No, only, no, yes or no, reason, yes or no. Should I wouldn't have, have, I would not have, I would not have. The only Why? reason I would have kept Dragic is because of his relationship with Butler. But other than that, I think we could have gotten something better if I'm Miami. The same way I feel about Allen so Houston, what, I think what, you'd what rather wait. I think you'd rather wait. And you have to remember, I actually win this argument just based off of historical facts. It didn't pan out. It wasn't a good move. Most but of the moves the Knicks have made, every, my argument is this. We can Most back. of the moves the Knicks have made did not pan out. I, I was also the back. one who said you should have gotten rid of Mello much earlier. You should have been gotten rid of Mello. Anybody can sit back after the move doesn't work and say it didn't pan out, so that's why you shouldn't have signed But him. I also said it beforehand, so I get to say I was right. I get to say I was so, right about Mello. Again, I get to say I was right about Stoudemire. So again, I get to say so again, I was right about Iman Shumpert. Hat, I get to say hanging, I was right about Sparks. I get to say I was right about Ewing. I can say I was right about all of them. That, took tw- that was 20 years ago. That had, again, to my I'm point, had nothing to do with this current regime. Had I'm nothing to do with this current I'm regime. My hat. What did I say? I said in the past 30 years, y'all have not wanted to win championships. Again, has nothing to do with the current regime. When I, right. when I made the point that the current regime is trying to take a slow and steady approach, you're still referencing something that took place 20 plus years ago. You're that right. has nothing to do with Leon you're right. As an organization, as an organization, they have failed. Oh, let me, let me, they have let me, failed as an organization. You have let not let produced let championships. Let me chime in. Let me chime in. Because I will, I will, I will say this. Since Leon Rose has gotten there, I do feel like the Knicks are moving in a different direction outside of James Dolan, who I still feel like there's something wrong with him per, as personally, you know with all of the nonsense that's going on outside of, of basketball operations. But yeah. I will give the Knicks credit. I I actually applauded the moves that they made uh, two seasons ago now when they brought in uh, Julius Randle and uh, all of those guys on like one and two year deals to kind of position themselves. And I applauded them again for not going after an older Chris Paul who has a lot of money left on his contract. Um, bringing in Tom Thibodeau, I. Uh, the, the Knicks right now, defensively, they've been like in the top five for the majority of the season. Uh, we finally saw 
something from RJ Barrett. We saw him kind of turning the turning the curve. He's playing defense. Him and Julius Randle were like fourth and fifth in defensive win shares this season. So I, I do have to give the Knicks credit on that. And, and Lawrence, I I know where you because because I'm I'm that guy. I'm the one that that loves to. Right. Throw, but but throw here's 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 what well. I think. What you bring up, the point you bring up is this, and this is the point I've been trying to drive home. I just don't drive it home because a lot of Knicks fans don't want to hear me. They have to know their identity as a team, as an organization, and as a franchise. And the Knicks, when they make their moves, they don't make moves according to their identity. You want to know who the Knicks are? Go back to Pat Riley, Derek Harper, John Starks. Chris Child, Anthony Mason, that's Julius Randle. That's who the Knicks are. They need bang around guys. They need guys that are going to be up in your shirt, up in your face, and they're not, they don't care about pretty basketball. You cannot go out and get pretty basketball players to play in a New York Knicks jersey and think you're going to win a chip. The closest they came to a chip was when they were intimidators, was when they were strong players, when they were solid teams that played together. You get these one-on-one basketball players in here or these these so-called shooters, you can't you can't build franchises around them. But that's kind that's of why I have issues with them. They don't know their own identity. If you look at the Knicks right now with Tom Thibodeau and, and what he's doing with the Knicks, they're getting back to that style of basketball because now it's more gritty. It's more defense. You know, it sucks that Mitchell Robinson got hurt because I think that's going to affect a lot of things with his contract coming up. But, you know, I, I thought he was, he was going to be great underneath uh, Tom Thibodeau's tutelage. So I do think they, they are, they are, they're getting back to that, but it's, you know, it's, it, it's, a, it takes a while. Um, maybe I, I might have tried to keep Porzingis a little bit longer just to see how that thing would have worked out. But, you know, if he didn't want to be there, he doesn't want to be there. So I can't really say, you know, I can't beg him to, to stay. Um, but let's 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 switch over. Let's go. Let's let's let's, let's go over to Philly. Joel Embiid uh, made his return. He missed uh, ten games. He was the favorite to uh, to, to win MVP. Uh, Aaron, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to you on this one. Uh, now that Joel Embiid is back, you know, one, can he stay healthy? And two, uh, can they? beat the Nets in a seven-game series to go to the NBA Finals if need be? Yikes. Those are tough questions. Uh, Well, you know I'm biased, obviously. Embiid is my boy. I have mad love for him. Um, And honestly, injuries have always plagued him. He's had a hard time with that his entire career. So that is the question of the million-dollar question, I think, for almost any NBA star these days is can you stay healthy? I really don't know that it's possible for them to stay healthy an entire season. It just doesn't make, just doesn't seem possible these days. Um, and especially, you know, then you have that whole load management question that's thrown around and all of that. So, and then, you know, with the season being the way it has with COVID, I don't know. Um, obviously I hope so. That's, that's going to be my, you know, my wish for him. I really, really do. Because I think this season he has been the, it's been the best I've seen him play ever. So I'm super, super excited for him. I am hoping, wishing, praying, keeping my fingers crossed. He does stay healthy. Can they beat the Nets? Mm. I don't know. Listen, I'm not a Simmons fan, so I can't even get on this whole like Simmons, like defensive player of the year. Like, what are you talking about? I don't even understand what's happening. So I don't want to like throw tons of hate towards Simmons, but I am not a Simmons fan. I don't understand it. Yes. I understand his game has elevated this season. Um, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't understand that, that whole thing. So I, I mean, who, who's beating Katie, Kyrie, Blake, I mean, who, like, I, hard, I don't understand it. So I don't know. I mean, it would have to be like by the grace of like some basketball gods to step in. I feel like, um, do I want to see Philly beat them? Hell yeah. But is that realistic? I don't, I, I really don't think so. Well, I don't know. What, you, what you think? Seven, seven game series. That's a tough question. Um, you know, uh, again, I hate to bring Ben Simmons up. By the way, I'm just going to say this, and I'm not, this is not a shot at you, E, I promise. But I think the Knicks, if, if no, not you, Aaron. If the Knicks wanted a player, Ben Simmons would be a great Nick. Like, he'd be a great New York Nick. Like, right. that's the type of, that's the type of player they need. But anyway, um, I think Ben Simmons really could be an X factor in a series like that because Embiid's going to get his. Um, And I think Harris is going to get his, right? Tobias is going to get his. And I think if Ben Simmons can turn it on on both sides of the floor, 
that becomes a seven game series. Really? Yes. I think he's the X factor in that series. I really think he's a lot better than he knows. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, but that's, that's, that's a problem though. It is, it is, but it can, yeah. but things like that, you know, we've seen miracles happen in the playoffs. That's true. And I, and his, his game has definitely improved this season. And I think the, the new coaching, I think the new Philly had a big problem behind the scenes and the whole, you know, the staff and everything. So I think they're making progress and things are starting to change and he's starting to, to feel a bit more confident in his play. And clearly that's starting to show um, on the court right now. And I think him and B do have a chemistry, um, but I don't know. I'm still not, I'm not a believer. I'm just not a believer yet. So, I mean, listen, I want to, I, I'm, I love Philly. So I, I want that to happen. Um, but interesting. That's interesting. We'll see. I don't yeah. know. I mean, really? You think they could go seven game series with Katie Harden, Kyrie? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I agree with Lawrence on this one yeah. and, and two reasons. One, as he I, mentioned, I think Ben could be the X factor depending on how aggressive he is offensively because okay. the Nets defensively are one of the worst teams in the league. So if, if Ben is able to get something going right. with Tobias and, and let's, let's not fool ourselves. The Nets have no one who can stop and beat and beat is going to get anything he wants, no matter how long the series goes four five, six, seven games and beat is going to get whatever he wants. So Philly's issue is going to be finding that secondary scorer who can now at least try to match a little bit with Brooklyn. But to me, the, the two things I'm focusing on are, is Brooklyn completely locked in? Do we know what we're getting from Kyrie? Is Harden going to look like regular season Harden or postseason Harden that we've seen in the past? Yeah. And if those three guys are not locked in, then the big issue becomes, can Steve Nash outcoach Doc Rivers? And I don't think he can. And, and those are the two factors to me. I think I, if I had to bet money on it, I would still take Brooklyn to win the series. I think Brooklyn is the best team in the East, but Philly is close enough where if there are just some question marks, I think Philly can win that series. And as Lauren said, I think it could easily go seven games and then it becomes who can perform in a seven game series. Well, and also we have to remember it comes back down to who can stay healthy because Katie and Kyrie have been in and out, in and out, in and out. So Katie hasn't played it in two months. <laughs> right. So I, and I think they just, they just announced, right. That he should be back for the next game. So I, I mean, that's the other thing too, is like, are they actually playing for Brooklyn in the series? Cause if they're playing for Brooklyn, that changes things a lot too. I don't know. And, and since no one seems to be able to stay healthy, well, you know, that it's, it could be interesting. It could be a great series. I'm, I'm in for it. Yeah. You know, the shortened season, you know, it's, I think we're seeing what we saw with the NFL this season with the, the, the shortened return time and a lot more guys are getting injured. Um, but I do, I, I agree with, with, with both of you guys. I think Ben Simmons can be the X factor. He's at uh, about a little bit over 15 points a game right now. If Ben Simmons was at 21, 22 points a game right now, you know, we would speak about the 76ers in a completely different light. And we speak about them very highly right now because they, you know, they have been doing doing very well this season, holding down first place, even with uh, Joel and B going out with injuries. And then when you take into the effect, and I, you know, I said this a couple of weeks ago, I, I would be very concerned with James Harden going into the playoffs and outside of the, the, you know, him not showing up after the second round of the playoffs for the past couple of years, but because he's doing so much this season for the Nets where we don't have Kevin Durant for two months, Kyrie's in and out of the lineup. I'm concerned that they're going to burn James Harden out. So it won't even matter that he's stinking up the joint in the second round. He's just going to not have any juice left in the tank come the second round because he's had to carry the load for, for the Nets, uh, you know, for the most part of the, of the season because of injuries and guys going in and out of the, the lineup. I'm, I'm concerned with him burning out in terms of his decision-making. I think the biggest improvement we've seen from James Harden this season is his ability to run a team and run the team, not just, not just have them follow behind him like a Russell Westbrook style, which is my favorite player, by the way, just, run the team, like distribute the ball and get guys involved. I'm afraid that when we get to the playoffs and things get a little more difficult and the defensive schemes start to become a little more intense, he'll revert back, you know, sort of like uh, his panic mode is to go superstar mode. Um, and into, and before, into a comfort zone type. Right? Yeah. That's, that's your comfort zone for, for James Harden. And really quickly, uh, when we say, when we discuss Philly versus Brooklyn, are we completely ruling out Milwaukee? Yes. Yes. Sorry. I, I, um, 
I got Eric, to... you Eric, you have nothing to say about that. No, no, no. I, I'm I'm jumping right in. Um, Thank and you. shout out to Drew Holiday. He just got that new extension as well. Thank you. You know, we always applaud the players getting a bag over yes. here. But um, <laughs> I'm not completely disregarding them. I just again, coaching wise, I'm not a big fan of Coach Bud. I don't think he's done anything new over the last two or three seasons to help that team over the hump. And it goes back to Ben Simmons. If Philly matches up with them, I think Ben Simmons is a good enough defender to slow down Giannis. In the playoffs, Giannis has struggled against physical big defenders and teams that can just wall up on him and force him to, to take perimeter shots. Philly will force him to do that. And I also think Philly just has too much firepower for anything that Milwaukee could throw at them. We talked a lot about Ben Simmons. His numbers-wise, as Anthony mentioned, it's, it's true. If his numbers were stronger, we would highlight him a little bit more. But we got to remember the supporting cast is better now because Seth Curry is a great compliment at the two guard next to Ben. Yep. Yeah, listen, Milwaukee got to worry about not running into Miami again. <laughs> in, in this year's play. I think I think that should be their focus. Get past Jimmy Butler, uh, you know, Bam and, and, and those guys in South Beach first. And then maybe we can have this conversation. Um, and I, you know, not to, you know, take away from 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 Giannis. I think he's great. Um, you know, you can't deny back to back MVPs, getting the MVP and defensive player of the year um in the same season. However, we all know that the playoffs are a different monster and and, you know, it's the same thing with James Harden, how he's an MVP candidate the regular season. And as soon as you start going deeper into the playoffs, you know, then you really see who are those guys in this league. And, and, and those guys, those are the Stephs, the LeBrons, the KDs, the guys that can finish once the season, once we get into that second season and we get deep into that second season, those are the guys. So as of right now, Milwaukee hasn't proven to me that they can come out of the Eastern Conference. I don't even know right now if they can make it to the Eastern Conference Finals this season just based off of how the, the playoff bracket is going to come with, with with Philly and Brooklyn being at the top and the bottom of that of that bracket and everybody else falling in between. You know, I don't I don't think they they even make it out of the second round. I don't I don't see them beat either one if, if everybody's healthy. I got a question before we move on because I know we we probably have to. Does Giannis win a ring in Milwaukee ever? Or does Giannis become one of those big names that gets traded to one of those big teams? It's tough for me I, to say that. I think I think he never wins wins a ring in Milwaukee, and I think he makes his way to another team, and that's the only way he wins a chip. I don't think Giannis wins a chip unless he joins one of those big teams. I agree. Uh, Milwaukee's capped out. Uh, they had to resign Drew because of the picks they gave up, so they were in no man's land. But the team as currently constructed isn't good enough to win a chip, and based on oh, wait, salaries, they took it's over now. Wavin. They got PJ Tucker. Yeah, yeah, you know, they added PJ. They they added the sneaker king, so they, they good money now. But don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, the way the team is currently constructed and, and because of, of salary issues, this is gonna be their team for the next four or five years. I think Giannis might be out of there within two years. I think they give it a go this year, they try next year, and I think at that point he pushes to get out of there. I agree. Thank you. Yeah. I agree. Maybe you know, he, he, he I think Giannis needs a bona fide superstar running mate in order to to get him over the top that does the things that he doesn't do because even you know if you look at um a guy like lebron or Kawhi, they're more versatile on the offensive end of the of the basketball um you know Giannis, he's not a floor general you know what i mean like a like a like a lebron to where he can kind of take over he's not the shooter that steph is so he i think he's going to need somebody else another super superstar level player to complement him in the areas that that he lacks in order to get him over uh, over over the hump um Great. so yeah so i don't i don't i don't think he gets it done in, in Milwaukee if and if he wants him staying there then it's going to be you know, like one of those lifers, the, the Reggies that don't get a rain, the Pats, you know, the great superstar players, but they just don't have the team around them to get them over o, o, over the hump, you know? So, right. yeah, we got to well, we, we gotta wait and see. Uh, Rondo, so making his debut right now, actually, with the, with, with the Clippers. Um, how big of an addition is Rondo for the Clippers? Um, and will they miss Lou Williams? Heading into the playoffs, oh, is, am I answering that one? Because Lou Will was like the biggest move, and before the trade deadline, where I was just like, "You got to be kidding me!" As the Clippers, you give up Lou Will, it's over for y'all. It's over, and I'm not saying that he's their only guy, but he's a glue guy. 
you know, and it's very rare that you get an offensive glue guy who sits on your bench. Ginobili was a glue guy. You know what I mean? Travis Best, that's a glue guy coming off your bench. Uh, Jamal Crawford, when he's in a certain position, he's a glue guy coming off your bench. You need guys like even a Malik Rose back in the days was a glue guy coming off your bench. Right. So you need these guys that come off your bench and run your second unit. And Lou Will was like he could run a clinic on running the second unit. And now you're, you, you get rid of that midway through your season. You don't even prepare for that in your offseason. It's over for them. And I love Rondo. Rondo's one of my favorite all-time point guards. I will defend Rondo to and through, but I don't think that – I don't think he's going to be able to pick up any of that slack. And I think he's there for influence reasons more than he's there for play. Aaron, you want to chime in? No, I agree with him. <laughs> um, yeah, no, and I'm – yeah. Listen, I – I didn't want I didn't want Rondo to go to the Clippers, but that was at the beginning of the season. You know, the, the fact that they traded Lou Will for Rondo, for me, I think takes a little bit away from the trade and the impact that um, that Rondo will have on the team. Just because you know Lou Williams is pretty much their third scorer. Uh, you know what I mean? He's he's a guy that can create his own shot. He's a he's a he's a defensive liability. Yes, he can, he can be. But he is an energy guy, um, and then I, one of the issues that the Clippers had last season is the egos inside of the the locker rooms, mm -hmm. and guys feeling like Kawhi and Paul George was just coming in and doing whatever they wanted to, yeah. while you know the rest of these guy, guys guys kind of got it from the mud, so to speak, and you know we got to bust our ass to to do what we're doing, and then you got these guys they take all games when they want, they say and do whatever they want, and Rondo is a guy that will hold you accountable. It doesn't matter who you are. He will hold you accountable, will pull you to the side and tell you about yourself. He told LeBron about himself but when they were, when he was with the Lakers last year, he's not afraid to speak up. So I, I don't know if this necessarily, necessarily is, is the move that would push them over the top. I know they needed a point guard and somebody that could handle the basketball, but I don't, I don't know that this, I don't, I don't believe this move puts them ahead of the Lakers. I mean, one of the rules we have here at Real Fans Real Talk is that we don't tolerate any slander towards Lemon Pepper Lou. Uh, <laughs> Lemon Pepper Lou is a legend, you know, and I agree with you guys. I, I liked them as their sixth man. I always thought that was one of their biggest strengths to have that type of versatility off their bench. But this move was solely made to appease Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi can be a free agent this year. Kawhi has vocally said he needs a true point guard to initiate the offense so that he doesn't have to bring the ball up as much. And that's why they did it. Uh, they're, they're going to feel it, though, because they don't have that firepower off their bench. I know they really like Terrence Mann, but I don't think Terrence Mann is ready to step up um, for that role as a six man, and neither is Luke Kennard. So I think they're going to feel it. I like the move just from a veteran standpoint, but I, I, I just wish it didn't have to come at the expense of Lou Will, who I thought really could give him good minutes and good points off the bench, especially when you consider how banged up Paul George has been all year. He's their second uh, score on the team and he's a guy who just can't seem to stay healthy at all now he's dealing with a toe issue so you need some type of firepower off that bench and they just don't have it anymore I'm not I'm not a Paul George fan by the way you it's my playoff way, P? way off play play playoff way off wait we call him off P oh I just that's call what him he Paul calls George. himself right I that's just what he I, calls himself I call him Paul his mama call him Paul I'm gonna call him Paul you call him Paul that's it I call just... him Paul ain't no playoff <laughs> way off P. he still got to prove in the playoffs. listen I've seen Paul I'm sorry Ian and I'm gonna get right to you I've seen Paul go at LeBron when LeBron was at Miami that's what I remember I don't remember much else after that sorry go ahead e. fair enough oh, I, I was just gonna say regardless of the roster I just think the Clippers have problems they have like energy ego problems just problems they just can't seem to get it together they can't seem to be on the same page they can't so like regardless of who you bring in and who you switch up and who's you know starting not starting it doesn't matter to me I just feel like sometimes and I think Philly went through that too where you just kind of are in this rut and it doesn't matter what superstars you have if you can't get on the same page and when and like you said Trip, when people are are you know some people get to do whatever they want, show up when they want, come to practice, don't come to practice, live in Arizona, don't even live near the team, whatever. That just creates a lot of friction in the locker room. And it, I don't care what your roster looks like. And I don't care what superstars you have. When you have that going on behind the scenes, you're going to have problems on the court. I, I want to present a question because this is something that we talked about previously as well, Tripp and I. Are, 
are we solely viewing the Clippers in this way because of their collapse in the playoffs? Because had they gotten to the Western Conference Finals and lost, I think some of these things that we talk about, as you mentioned, the, 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 temp, the team chemistry isn't as strong. We would have overlooked those things because you're winning. But because they yep. blow that lead, I think we look at them differently. No, yes and no. I see what you're saying, definitely. I get that. But at the same time, like, you're, the energy speaks for itself, right? Win or lose. When you're, when you're solid as a unit, regardless of your winning or losing, you have a team chemistry, you have an energy, right? And you, and you handle the loss differently than the way they handled it. And I, so I just think that speaks volumes to me, at least from just like a standing back as a fan and watching all of like, just, just the, the, the way they were flowing, it just didn't, it, they weren't vibing. It's so, yes, I think that does definitely have an impact on the way that we approach it. But at the same time, I just feel like if you have a, if you have something solid going on and if it was just the playoffs, then what's happening. Right. So like, I, I, I don't know. I just, just for me, it's just an energy thing for me. And I just feel like that, that you, you guys know, I mean, when that's happening in the locker room, it shows up on the court, whether you like it or not. So you need to, you need to start there and then it will start, you know, to show itself in other places. I, just, I don't, I don't I, what you wish for type of situation with Rondo. Well, I mean, listen, Rondo is who Rondo is going to be, but you also know what you're getting with Rondo, right? You know you're getting a consummate veteran. You know you're getting a floor general, and you know you're getting a mouth. You're getting a mouthpiece, right? That guy is going to talk. He's going to talk to the ref. He's going to talk to the coach. He's going to talk to the opponents. You know that, right? And I don't necessarily know that he's enough to clean up that dynamic. Like Aaron said, it has been an energy thing for quite some time. For quite some time. And I think another problem we have is when we're in this capitalist type NBA movement where you want to have the highest played, highest paid players or the most talented players for the for your buck, you start to run into this issue where it takes a, spe a special kind of coach and a special organization to house all of this talent. And in order to house all this talent, you need talent in the front office as well. And a lot of teams don't play team basketball anymore. They don't understand what it means to be a team anymore. And that's a major problem because you think that you get superstars around and professionals around and they're just going to be able to pull it out. No, you still need chemistry. And so the Clippers have that problem. I think, if anything, the Clippers should probably bring in Paul Pierce to throw some parties. Oh, my goodness. Too soon? I, well, listen, it's not too soon. Um, wow. Shout out to Paul Pierce for living in his truth. And so, wow. you know. Just playing cards. They just playing poker. This is actually the first time in a long time that I actually rock with Paul Pierce because I, I actually lost respect for Paul Pierce. I say this all the time, uh, that 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 one of those last uh, games he played at the Garden when he started bowing and running laps around around oh, the man. So I had him rock with Paul Pierce since then because the New York in me was just like, nah, bro, you don't get to come up in here and do that. MJ didn't even do that. So right. this is actually the first time in years that I actually like uh, Paul Pierce. So you know what? If you, I, I'm with that, man. I like. I didn't know. You, I didn't even know you. I didn't even know you were a poker fan. I didn't even know that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how, how do you do a live like that and literally like the next morning, he's like, happy tenth birthday to my son? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what was that? Are you kidding me? Right now, when I saw that post, I was like, no, 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 no. What well, is happening? Ball is all over the place. Uh, his basketball takes are terrible, but he's living his best right. life. Yeah, Facts. living his best life. Facts. He went. To, he went to Kansas, right? Let's move on. Uh, 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 uh. He was celebrating 420 early too. You know, he rock truck, uh, rock truck, Jayhawks. <laughs> he was at. Wait, wait, I didn't. We're, I'm not talking NBA about Paul Pierce. I'm like he. He stays in Kansas for me, and that's it. That's where. I, Listen, he never had a career. It stops in college. That's where it ends for me, and the answer. He was. He was on the first super team, though, wasn't he? He was on the first super team with That's Rondo, not the first Ray super Allen, team, though. Kevin Garden, a big ticket. That's KG not the first was a big super deal team. back then. Oh, K KG was. Considered, considered a super team. Yeah. As a That's whole a, super team, but you can you can talk about the Showtime Lakers as, as a super team. You can talk. Or you can talk about the Detroit the, Pistons. Sounds right? like the, a super team. Right. You can talk I mean, about Malone, uh, Malone and Peyton in LA. That was a super team. Yeah, but that was over the hill super but team. That was yeah. At least they half, were all... half was over the hill. Half was in their prime. Mm -mm. Yeah, that was it was a half and half. That it was, was half embarrassing half. when they did that, man. I'm they, sorry. They needed to do that like three years before, and then they might have had some success. But Something. at that point, it was yeah, it was it was too late. It was That's like Patrick Ewing in a Supersonics jersey. It just didn't feel right. Yeah, it didn't. yeah, that was weird. 
That was that was really yeah. weird. I thought you know Pat should have been you know and shout out to, yeah. to Pat because they disrespected him. James Dolan, you know I don't know what's going on with him again. What I, was I, that? Yeah, it was even worse when Pat was in an Orlando jersey. Yeah, that was, just, oh, that was awkward bad. all the way around. Awkward, crazy. Turn guys up now, man. Like I can't, I can't see Tim Duncan playing in another jersey. No, I see Kobe in another jersey. Certain guys, Dirk. Like once you, once you have that type of of status amongst your organization, it's like I just feel like you're supposed to retire with that team. You know what I mean? So, but I don't think that I don't think the Knicks. Um, I don't think that uh, they've been running that organization like that. You know, being in this is a tough market. New York is a tough market, right? And so the people in the front office, front office have to be worried much more about the market than they are about the legacy of some of the players that have come through. And that has been obvious in the way they've handled some of their legacy players, right? And I think that's oh, ugly for them. Yeah. You gotta blame, you gotta, we gotta, we gotta hold the fans accountable as well because Knicks fans continue to sell out the garden. So like we, you know, like you mentioned earlier with we talking about maybe 30 years of a lot of nonsense going on with the Knicks, but if, if the Garden still sells out, even when the Knicks lose, we have to start holding the fans accountable and saying, yo, y'all gotta stop buying these tickets, y'all gotta stop buying these merch. And so either James Dolan says, you know what, I'll just sell the team, or he does better. And even though the team itself, you know, as far as the basketball operations are doing better over the last couple of seasons, we literally just saw James Dolan kick out a fan that had on the band Dol- um, Dolan T-shirt on a week ago. We mm-hmm. literally saw the situation that happened that should never happen with Patrick Ewing at the Garden. He said that man should never be disrespected at the Garden. Same thing with Spike Lee. Spike Lee might as well be a member of the Knicks team. Like yeah. that's how much of a staple he is. Yeah. Charles Oakley situation. These things should not happen. So I, at some point, we got to hold the fans accountable as well. Like you got to stop buying into this product. If this is what they're putting out for you, yeah, yeah, but it's that's not just—it's not just New York fans though. That's the highest-grossing franchise in NBA in the NBA. Period. Win or lose, it doesn't matter. They—they they bring in the the highest revenue per team in the NBA. So it's not just in New York. I mean, it's across the country. People, yeah. for some reason, are supporting the Knicks. And it's—it's, it's, but I think it's unfair to put that burden on the fans because New York fans are passionate about basketball. Right. So whether the product is good as or good or bad, the fans still love basketball. And, and I've said this to you before, Trip. It's similar to the Yankees. When the Yankees weren't that good in the late 70s and early 80s under Steinbrenner, fans were still going. It, it he wasn't a great owner at that time, but fans were still going out to the game and fans were still rooting and wearing their Yankee gear. So it's the same thing with the Knicks. It's unfortunate that James Dolan isn't a great owner because the fans are so passionate, but we can't blame the fans for wanting to see basketball. Yeah, but when well, the and team is terrible right. and you're still selling out, who, who do we blame for that? Like, why would you want to go to watch a team that you know is trash from the beginning of the season? But, I mean, all right, so prior to Braun going to the Lakers, right, the Lakers were in that tough transitional phase of, like, six or seven years where they weren't that good, and the Bus family wasn't running the organization that well, and fans were still coming out. But the Lakers yeah. also have the most or are tied for the most NBA championships, so I can understand you giving leeway to a team that is accustomed to winning. As a right, but we're talking about a bad product during a bad time. Yeah, but same thing with the Yankees. No, no, no. Same thing with the Yankees. That Yankees discredits every, what you're saying discredits everything about being a fan, being a loyal fan. You can't, you can't. No, 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 no. It can't be win or lose. Then I choose to support you. I'm a new. If if I'm a Knicks fan, I'm a Knicks fan. Like I'm a Kansas fan. I'm a Kansas fan. But, and it does not matter. but you can you can support without you can support with out spending money though. Yes, that's it. Is what he's trying to say. And I like, and the reason I like this is because you know me, I'm I'm Mr. Revolutionary, right? Mr. Boycott, why are we putting our money into the hands of our enemy type deal? And if losing is your enemy, why do you keep funding? I like where he's going with it. I think it's a crazy idea to boycott your team until they win. I think it's crazy, but it could work. And I'm not even saying just like, if, if they're just a bad team and they're trying, that's one thing. But if ownership, is the problem and they are not doing anything to fix it. And we keep seeing bad decision after bad decision after bad decision. Then it comes to a point where, yeah, I'm gonna watch every game on TV at home, but I'm not about to pay. But if, if, even if you're watching it at home, you're still supporting, right? Because yeah. Dolan owns MSG. So he, I didn't, but I just spent $100 on this ticket and $150 on snacks and popcorn. But and you're I paying the cable bill. That's the other thing. That's all the books and stuff. You're paying the cable bill. You're paying the cable bill. He owns cable vision. He owns cable vision. Like, <laughs> I don't watch power. That's different. 
<laughs> but why should the players? Why should the players have to be punished for poor management? Like, mm. like we blame we blaming the losses only on poor management. Well, no, but he was saying if it's if it's poor management and ownership, and and so listen, yes, I I mean, but I'm just saying like you can't just like, because why can't we have Mark Cuban as the owner for the Knicks. All right, so and and I love I love Aaron's points here as well, but. James Dolan to me is always an interesting case study because James Dolan has never been a cheap owner. They just haven't always allocated the funds the right way. Yeah, right? Yeah. Like Donald Sterling was a cheap owner. Yeah. Donald Sterling put no money into that organization. James, the problem with James Dolan is he's hired the wrong people to, op, to, to manage basketball. So now they've just spent money. And as Lawrence said earlier, you overpay for Allen Houston. You know, you make bad trades. You overpay for Tyson Chandler. Isaiah Thomas. Right, Isaiah, right. But we can't blame James Dolan as if he's a cheap owner. He has pumped no, a lot of money into the team. It just people. hasn't worked. We can blame him because he picked those people and put them into place. And so, he, kept, he kept them there longer than he should have with, the, with a lot of those guys. So that- right, But have, again, he has, Mark Cuban has spent a lot of money too. Hmm. Everyone loves Mark Cuban. I like Mark Now Cuban. we do. We didn't, everyone didn't love Mark Cuban in the beginning. And Mark no. Cuban didn't have Charles Oakley accosted out of the garden. He didn't, he, he didn't disrespect Spike Lee. I can't argue that point. He didn't I disrespect Sean Marion and Steve Nash. <laughs> I can't, right? I can't argue, what? I can't what? argue those points. I can't argue those points. You're right. You know what? Can we, can, we, can, we, can we talk KD for a second? Um, I don't I've been know, waiting. Uh, he's been, he had his little back and forth with uh, Michael Rappaport, oh. um, you know, Obviously, it was some things that were said in private that were brought to the light. There's uh, no you did private. mention. I knew no. you. I knew she was going to say that. There There's is no such thing. Private when you're Katie, I'm sorry. I knew she Stop was going to say that. Stop it. And I have Stop a huge it. problem with that. I have a huge Stop problem it. with that. I, I, I don't so, make the rules. So, so yeah. because I'm so because I'm talented at basketball, I don't have privacy because I'm talented. Listen, no, but hold on. Wait, wait, can okay. I make this real quick? Let me just say this real quick. Because, yeah. because Eric, you mentioned uh, Donald Sterling a little while ago, right? So we got we to gotta play devil's advocate here. So if, it's, if everyone is okay with his private phone conversation being leaked and then him being forced out as an owner, if that's acceptable, then how can we then say it's not acceptable for Michael Rappaport to put out private text of KD saying some real reckless stuff? We got it. We I got, got it. I got the answer. I got the answer. What Sterling did had to do with his management. Yes. Like his perception, his point of view will affect the decisions he makes. These points of view will not affect the decisions KD makes on the court. Now, will it, will it hurt his chances in terms of endorsements? Sure. But is he still a ball player? Okay. Yes. And this, hold on really quickly, really quickly. This goes back to my question. And this is way off topic. Do people still listen to R. Kelly's music? Some people do still say he can make music. I mean, if it comes Kevin, up. Kevin Durant can still play ball. Okay. Yeah, he, he can still play ball. Uh, yeah, but, um, this has nothing to do with that, but okay, so. <laughs> nothing to do with that. There, there, there's a couple of things you have to think about here. One, first of all, let's, let's start with Katie's apology. Okay, so his apology was, I'm sorry that you saw that. Not I'm sorry I said it. Not I'm sorry I did it. He was, I'm sorry that you saw it. Okay. Me but, too. So let let's stop a second, Katie. Don't don't even don't even don't even act like people don't care what you have to say. Don't act like first of all, what Rappaport said wasn't even that big of a deal. He was like, just don't look like you're gonna cry. Why engage? Why engage with that? And why take it so far when you know that's coming out? Rappaport is known for doing that. He has a whole segment on his show about that. Why would you engage with that unless you wanted it to come out? So, I don't know. So, but, so who 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 do we owe an apology to? Who who's he apologizing to? Rappaport? That's it? No, no. Are no, we no. supposed to apologize to the fans? Oh, but or no. Because we're in a sense we live in it. We also live in a sensitive society, right? But now. that's but that. So then that's my problem. The that's troll, true. the no, troll, no. the troll in this situation is getting supported. We're supporting a troll. You just said it yourself. Why did you engage? He's trolling people, right? That he has a segment on his show. So we're supporting troll culture by no, saying no, you no. shouldn't have responded to him. No. In private. No. We no, should have no, responded, no. but it's just, you know, you, you have to, we, okay, for, you know, Kevin Durant, at the end of the day, he's a superstar basketball player, but he's also a, a black man in America. So we, 
we don't get those same we, we're not afforded those same luxuries where we can say certain things and not be put to the fire so to speak so he has to understand he has to understand that and choose his words wisely you could clap back at michael rapaport but you know just that the language and some of the things that he was saying is like bro you know where they're going to take it because of you saying this I don't know. I, I listen. This is a fine line, and Lawrence and I have talked about this many a times on the show. It's like you know, what is private and what is public, and what role model status means, and do you really have to play into that? Yes or no. But really, at the end of the day, I think your bank account is the thing that that you know these guys are concerned about mostly, right? Because does Katie really care about all the little kids that look up to him? No, I don't think really. If if that's the way he's talking about it, and if he doesn't that's not talk, fine either. So I mean. I get it. Listen, if you want to be real and you, that's how you want to live and that's how you want to do it, that's fine. There, are, I'm sure there will be consequences that come your way in terms of sponsorship or whatever, yes or no. But I just don't, for me personally, I just don't understand like what triggered him to respond and that, like, why would you even, what is it even that, like, why? But that's not up, that's not to, up to us to decide how right. people are affected by other people interacting with them. That's like me walking into a situation, a, a situation and causing a reaction in you and then saying, how dare you respond that way? No, no, That's I, not up for us. And then I have, and then you have to apologize for how I perceive your response. And then to make it worse, you have to apologize, not just to me, but to everybody now, because I picked at you and then I made it public. I don't support this. Well, I will say this. They do have this. There are a lot of uh, morality uh, clauses that people have to adhere to. So, you know, so yeah, he's going to have to apologize. Now, if, if, I, if I'm in a situation where I'm arguing with somebody, I'm, I'm, I'm the type of person that I'm going for the worst possible thing because I want to crush you if we going back and forth. You know, now granted, I don't want everything to be like, I, I'm not going to say that on live on the air while we doing the show. There's certain things I might not say. And it's also like, there'll be things I might say if we was in person. Just because I know, you know, things to go out, and I might not want that stuff to that side of me to go out. But I'm not gonna sit up here and say you come at me crazy, or if I if I feel offended to that level, I'm not gonna come back at you in a certain way. But he is a a major public figure, and once it's out, yeah. Even though I don't, again, I don't I agree with you, Aaron, as far as the apology goes. He, he wasn't apologizing, you know, for what he said. He was just apologizing because he got caught and everything went out there. But I'm not gonna sit up here and act like I wouldn't clap back at somebody right. that came at me sideways too. Well, listen, I, you know, a part of me respected the fact that he didn't apologize because I was like, at least he owns it and he stands by what he said. Cool. At least he's real about it because I, I prefer that than that like fake ass apology that like your PR people, you know, wrote for you just to read just so you can like absolve yourself of the guilt of it. Nah, I mean, you can miss me with all that. I don't care. So at least he kept it real. I respected that. What I didn't understand was why, like, these, listen, guys, come on, you know this, when you sign up for this, you, whether you signed up for the role model job or you signed up for the public figure job, it's part of who you are. There are, you sign contracts. There are things in your contract that you understand going into it. He knew he was, when that came out, he knew he was getting fined for it. He but, knew it. And that's, to... how the, that's how they, what? No, go. No, but so I'm saying like, I understand there's like the personal, the private, the role model, the professional, there's all of these things and how, how much access should we really have and why do we hold them to this higher standard just because they can, they can ball, right? So I get all that and I hear you and I understand that's your point, Lawrence, and I totally get it because we've had this conversation many a times, but at the same time, like you have to understand, you have to, as long as you can sleep at night, and you're happy with it, I guess that's really what, what matters at the end but, of the day. But Peep, but Peep, look at the position we're all sitting in, right? We have a position where we, all four of us, have platforms, and on our platforms, we get to say our opinion, and our opinion has the opportunity to influence other minds. Are we not in the position to now discuss certain things that we've accepted as a norm? We accept it as a norm that fans are mad invasive. We accept it as a norm that when you become famous or you become super talented, you lose your privacy. But we're in a position, the four of us are in a position to actually discuss that and set up new norms and actually point out, wait a minute, fans have way too much human access to other humans who just happen to have talents and they have way too much dependence and reliance on them to help them raise their children. Yes, but athletes- That's for us to say, we should say that. 
Yes, but also, but also celebrities and athletes have free choice. They have freedom to do what they want to do. So you know when you're in that spot, if you're going to make the choice to put that out there, there is a possibility that becomes public. Do you care or not care? That's up to you. But in this day and age, in the social media age, like nothing is off limits, it seems these days. I'm not saying I agree with it. I'm just saying that's the world we live in now. So when you decide to go in and say the things that you said, there is a huge, especially to another celebrity or famous person, there's a high likelihood it's coming out. So it's whether you want it to or not, you are who you, you're KD, one of the most popular basketball players on the planet. Okay, like it's just so I totally I hear both sides. I see what you're saying completely, but this is the way it is right now. I feel like I, I, we got to lighten up the mood a little bit, right? So, Ben, 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 Paul Pierce. Yeah, yeah. Ben at his Ben at his Easter Sunday. I feel like I should reference the God MC. Um, sensitive thugs, they all need hugs. You know what I'm saying? KD is ultra sensitive, bro. He ultra is. sensitive, he and is. it doesn't matter what it is. He has a problem with any opinion that he that he doesn't agree with. Uh, but I will say this, and I follow Michael Rappaport on social media. He's a good follow. He's entertaining. But yep. I think Michael Rappaport was wrong here because he himself, in his own apology, said, KD and I are friends, and we would joke in certain manners, but then I felt like he went too far in this particular exchange. And so once you tell me you friends, why can't you get that man on the phone? Right. Why can't you guys just discuss this yeah, and say, hey, KD, I felt you went a little too far there. And as a man, man to man, I ain't like it, and we're going to cut it short right there. Yep. You know, Anthony and I have had heated exchanges and text messages, joking exchanges. Sometimes to the to the to the rest of the world, they might feel like, "Oh, you guys are talking about it. You gone a little too far." But at the end of the day, that's my man, and I can always get him on the phone and say, "Look, we good now? I right, bet. No, no problem." So, I agree. I, to me, that's where I think Michael Rappaport is wrong. I think KD too often allows himself to get pulled into these discussions too often, whether it's it is a Michael Rappaport or a fan on Twitter, right? He did, and, yeah, and, and he's done it. A, he's done that a lot before, but that's what I'm saying. When do you step? Like, where are his people? If he can't do it, where are his people? Step in and be like, "Yo, bro, chill." Like, we don't need to make a account for this one. Responsible this. Take account and get at him. Ultimately, I, <laughs> KD shouldn't even have his phone anymore. KD yeah, should not have his phone anymore. That. Yeah, that. take his phone away because he has a problem with everything on social media, and he feels he needs to respond to everything. At some point, you got to step back and look, let the people say whatever they're going to say. Aaron, I agree with you. When you when you take on that job in any public life, you have to understand what comes with it. People are going to dig and people are going to try to find flaws in you and people are going to try to expose certain things. And that's all right. You got to have thick skin to say, I don't care what you think about me. I'm still going to do my job. Right. 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 No. Yeah, I totally agree. Whether you sign up for it or not, whether you agree with it or not, it's just the way it is. And so you, then you, you, it's on you. You have to decide how you're going to handle it and move about. And for me, I just don't think KD should even give it any energy. I think he needs to focus on staying healthy and balling out on the court. Just, and that's, that's all the message you need to send. I don't even know why you need to respond. You're KD, you're KD. Look in the mirror, dude. Let it go, bro. It's all good. And just go want, back to playing basketball. We want to make this into a Nate Robinson, uh, a Jake Paul situation, and y'all want to step uh, in the ring and put the gloves on. Exactly. Why you got to say that about me? That's Nate? so yeah. messed up. Man. Why you got to say oh, that about me? That's an image. Saying, he did challenge him to a fight, so I'm just saying, if that's nah, it, man. you might as well be a celebrity fight, and then we can watch it for the world, and then you no, can get the No, we're not doing that. By the way, I don't think KD can fight. I'm just going to throw that out there. I don't want to fight him. I just don't think he can fight. <laughs> he probably can't, but yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. This is Real Fans, Real Talk. talk. Real Fans, Real Talk, we as real as you thought. Real Fans, Real Talk, we the illest of course. Real Fans, Real Talk, we the illest of course. Real Fans, Real Talk, we as real as you thought. Real Fans, Real Talk, reporting live from the cam. High in demand, so please stand by if you can. What we got is worth a lot, so put a tie on your plans. On court, talking sports through the eyes of the fans. With Trip Young, Emma Marie, Eric Sanchez, you heard what I said, we elite. Check the latest topics and stay ahead of the beat. Keep us in your topics and uh -huh. we ahead of the Yo. streets. 
It's Johnny Floss, bringing a different type of blend Backing up Misfit to make sure y'all tuned in You gotta watch, this show is one of a kind Updates on your TV screen from 8 to 9 For the older folks, so even if you younger No matter what sport, this show, we got it covered It's filmed live in the middle of BK So ain't no better sports show to watch on Thursdays What's up guys, I'm Emerald Marie And be sure to check us out on the web at realfansrealtalk.com